What's up and welcome to another live unboxing on Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to go over the top five best deals in gaming laptops that I could find. Then we've got the Lenovo Legion Idea Pad here. Or sorry, not Legion, but Lenovo Idea Pad with a 3050 Ti. I got this for $549 during the Cyber Sale or Cyber Friday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever you want to call it. It's 549 still. The sale continues on. They must really want to sell these guys. And um, I still think it's a pretty good time to buy a budget laptop in particular because those are not likely to be replaced as soon. Um, we have the new 4070, 4080s probably coming out here in like uh, you know January and January, February, March timeframe. And yet the 30 50 Ti will probably not be replaced by the 4050 Ti until probably June or something like that. Usually it's a little later on in the year before the budget laptops get replaced. So if you can get this on sale now, it's probably still a good time to pick one of those up. Um, let me just make sure everything is good with the live stream. Hello, welcome. I see some people hopping on the live stream. Um, feel free to say hello. Uh, anyway, we're going to go over the top five best deals first. Then we're going to unbox that Lenovo IdeaPad. We're gonna take the bottom off, we're gonna to try to get through a Windows setup, and we're gonna do some initial benchmarks. So that's kind of the goal for today. Uh, we'll do the impressions on the chassis, the keyboard, the mouse, the display, and we'll see how the laptop feels uh, in initial first impressions. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start out with the top five deals of the day. So. First up is the laptop that we are unboxing today, Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. It's a 15.6 inch display. We've got a Ryzen 5 5600H in this machine, so it's a six core, 12 thread CPU, an eight gigs of RAM, RTX 3050 Ti, a 256 gig SSD. So downsides in this machine, only eight gigs of RAM and only a 256 gig SSD, which is kind of small. So you'll have to either manage your file size or upgrade that. We'll see how easy it is to upgrade when we take the bottom off of this guy here coming up later today. Now the Gigabyte G5 is next and it's uh, right in line, very similar specs to the Lenovo IdeaPad. So this is uh, also 549. So this might be another good option if you're looking for a 3050 Ti. And we've got a full HD IPS gaming display. So the, the display in the Gigabyte is also a little higher refresh rate, 120 hertz on the Lenovo, 144 hertz on this Gigabyte. So that's pretty nice. Uh, same GPU and a bigger SSD. So that's a nice advantage for the Gigabyte G5, at least uh, specs on paper, the G5 I think wins out by a little bit. And then we have the Acer Nitro 5. This is over at Walmart. Again, links in the description for all of this. And if you do use those links, it does help support me as a creator, but no pressure to use these links at all. Just trying to point out some good deals that I've been able to find online. So we have an RTX 3060, Ryzen 5 5600H, 144 Hertz full HD display, and it's 798. So that's a very juicy price for an RTX 3060. Very juicy indeed. Um, so that's a, a, a certainly an option. Looks like kind of an older version of the Nitro chassis, but it uh, should have a decent amount of performance on the budget. You know, be able to play 1080p games really well. Same for the 3050 Ti, but it's not going to be perfect. Um, all right, next up we have the Zephyrus G14 with a QHD 120Hz display, Ryzen 9. Uh, I believe this is 6900HS. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 6000 series, one terabyte SSD, which is really nice for this price point, and then 16 gigs of DDR5 memory and an RX 6700S GPU. So it should be uh, moderately high performance, uh, very thin, portable, and it's a pretty reasonable price right now with $450 off at $1199. And last but not least, I think this is the best deal of the day still. It's the MSI Katana GF66, 100, 144 Hz 1080p display, but with a 3070 Ti and an i9 12900H. That's just, that's an insane amount of raw silicon power, though it probably will be a lower power TDP limit on this laptop, so keep that in mind. Um, but still, that's some really good silicon in there, so for the money, I don't think you're going to beat that in terms of 
raw silicone for the money, I guess. And it's hard to say if that's going to actually translate to better performance because as we've seen, lower TDP, cheap, uh, lower TDP, lower thermal design power, lower TDP results in lower performance for GPU and CPUs. So we'll have to see if uh, this one would actually beat, like say an RTX 3070 and a Legion 5. It probably would be close, but the, the 3070 or the higher TDP might actually beat it. Okay, so hopping back over to the chat. What's up, Amanda and Eric? Welcome to the live stream. So we're gonna be checking out the Lenovo Idea Pad now that we've gone over the deals of the day. And I'm really curious to see what happens. See if uh, we have a success. I did do an unboxing on the Acer Predator Helios 300 recently. And uh, that laptop did not even start up. So hopefully this one starts. So that would be, that would be pretty amazing. Um, it does help me if you guys want to drop a like on this live stream and help spread the love um, so the algorithm shares the video a bit. But let's go ahead and switch to unboxing view. Very nice. So you can see it's just got a pretty plain box here. Almost all the Lenovo's come in these, the same type of box. And we've got, so right off the bat, we have a, looks like this is a hardware enclosure. So if you want to put a two and a half inch drive in this, you're gonna, in this laptop, you're gonna need this. And looks like an extra ribbon cable. And uh, that's the hard drive connector thing right there. So you're gonna have to be able to do a, um, a little bit of extra work if you want to put a two and a half inch drive in here, because it's not already, the extra equipment's not already in there, but we can look at how you would do that during this unboxing. All right, so here, whoa, hello. Looks like the power adapter also came out with the laptop. Here is the power brick. It's pretty small, very portable. How many watts is it? 135 watts, so not a very high power brick, but it's not a very high uh, demand CPU or GPU because both the CPU and GPU in this are gonna be lower TDP, more entry level um, gaming performance chips, and they don't need as much power as the bigger, beefier gaming laptops. So, There is the laptop right there. Okay. So let me go ahead and clear this off. And I'm really curious. So the main the main drive for me with this laptop is uh, this is like basically one of the very best bang for the buck machines on the market. And I'm thinking it may be like a big, uh, a big seller for anyone looking for more of a budget gaming experience. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a really good overall experience for the money. You know, be able to get you into almost all the games you'd wanna play on hopefully, you know, medium settings on the uh, newer games and probably higher ultra settings on the older games. All right, so where does this plug in? Looks like it plugs in over here on the left. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the ports. So here is the left side of the laptop. We have a vent, a power plug, ethernet port, HDMI, and then a USB 3. Let me see if I can get the light to show the ports at least a little better here. There we go. Okay, so there's those ports. And very nice. No USB A's on that side. It's important to keep that in mind. And it looks like we have two USB A's and a headphone port on the right side. And the back has no ports. The front has no ports. So that means you're gonna be limited to only one uh, side having USB A's and only one USB 3, and only one display out. So you've got that HDMI port. I'm curious if that USB-C works as a display 
out as well. It doesn't look like it, but it might. All right. Boom. There is a little thing about Lenovo warranties right there. But let's go ahead and put this down below. And let's see if the laptop will turn on successfully today. <laughs> yes, we have backlit keyboard. That's very nice. And the keyboard feels good. Let's see if the display, I see a logo. We have, we have liftoff folks. This is exciting. How much RAM in this? It's only eight gigs. Uh, what's up, Moby? What's up, man? Yeah, I remember we gave you, uh, you won a giveaway winner, right? Um, what was the thing you won again, Moby? I can't remember. Anyway, so we're gonna wait for this to go ahead and boot up. Let's go ahead and check out what's inside of this little extras box here, because this is kind of nice that they included this. Sometimes you have to get an external tray. Though I wish I wish they had just installed it inside the laptop. So all I had to do was swap it out. It was the Strix G17. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, yeah. How's it? How is that working for you? Still using that? All right. So we're gonna set this up as United States. And we're going to get connected. Let me just go ahead and switch the camera angle for a moment while we get this set up. Um, all right. Yeah, the 3070 is still going strong. Good to hear. I was like, I wonder if he sold it or if he still has it. But that's good to hear that it's still going strong. How's the uh, how's the chassis on the Strix holding up? Like, is it like wearing off a lot or not? I'm curious. Okay, so it's going to check for Windows updates. Um, let me go. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and do some keyboard testing, right? All right, so let me go ahead and bring in the camera to the top down again. And we're gonna turn this thing like this, all right? And we're gonna zoom in. All right. Beautiful. All right, let's get focused. There we go. So uh, let's go ahead and so you can see the backlight on the keyboard. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to shield this very well, but the backlight looks really strong and very bright and vibrant and all of the symbols are lit up and not just the numbers on here. That's really nice. Um, Cause sometimes the backlights only do the letters and the numbers, but not the secondary symbols. Uh, the keyboard layout is the exact same as the Legion 7i that I have, that I'm live streaming from. So I really like this keyboard layout. You get a number, full number pad, home and page up, page down. And this keyboard feels, I think, very similar to the Legion 7i, actually. It's like the typing experience feels almost identical, if not identical. Um, let's do a flex test real quick. So going around the chassis here. Pretty good amount of flex by the keyboard um, on the space bar, right by the space bar. And still a good amount of flex pretty much everywhere. I mean, this is what you kind of expect on the budget machines. They have, don't have as much reinforcement on the chassis. But the keyboard is, I mean, it's, it's rigid enough that I don't think you would notice this very much, except right here by the space bar, you might notice it. Um, depends on how much weight you put on the keyboard. You're not supposed to put that much on the keyboard, obviously, right? But um, and uh, let's go ahead and do a little typing test. I 
if I can. All right, the typing test of the keyboard. Yeah, that feels good. It is a nice, that is a nice premium feeling keyboard. I give the keyboard a solid nine out of 10. I mean, I don't, I don't think it could get much better than that, especially for a budget gaming machine. Um, I think having cooler RGB lighting would be pretty sick. Like if you look at my, you look at my Legion, it's got like our per key RGB lights, which are way cooler, but the actual feel of the keyboard is, as far as I can tell, identical. Mr. Tech, where is the Acer Predator? The Acer Predator is in uh, the shop, I guess you could say. Uh, no, it's it's in the box. I I need to... I basically need to take it back to Best Buy and get get a, uh, a new one. Get a new one sent my way. Um, I did go into, uh, I did call them on the phone and they were like, we could, sh we could have you ship it back to us, but um, if we do that, then it's going to be a big delay. So it's better if you just go into Best Buy store that has one in, sh in stock and you'll be able to actively just swap it, hot swap it for a new one for the same price too. Because right now it's, uh, the Predator Helios is 1200 right now in Best Buy. It was 1500 It's on sale for 300 off right now. But I bought it for a thousand, so I don't want to pay twelve hundred dollars, you know, for the same machine. So, um, okay, help us protect this. Check. Hello. All right. What's up? I see a bunch of people hopping on the live stream. Please feel free to ask any questions. Um, we've done so far, we went over the top five gaming laptop deals that I could find today at the beginning of the video. And then um, we went over the keyboard and the mouse test. And then we have not taken the bottom off. I'm just trying to get the laptop set up before I, I'll shut it down again here. And we will take the bottom off. But right now I'm just trying to get logged in. They're having me do like a double verification thing here. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm, going to be able to verify this. I certainly hope so. There we go. I think this will work. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need to call my friend who had, uh, for some reason it's not trying to verify on my account, it's trying to verify on my buddy's account. So my buddy Darren, I don't know why, he, he, I think he used to be signed into this account for some reason. Yo, how's it going dude? Hey, so you're live on the live stream, just so you know. Um, oh, so, uh, it's wanting me to verify the code from your one plus seven. Okay. Hold on a second. I don't know why, but it's not letting me log in. So let's see if I got a notification. Yeah, I got the notification. And it says the number on your one plus is 27, but a, a second ago it said 67, I think. Okay, so 27 is the number? Yeah, I think so. Should be. Okay, gotcha. Okay, well, we'll have to get that changed so it comes to my phone. <laughs> That's so weird. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's get that figured out. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Okay. There we go. All right. Now we're ready to type in this code. Ah. Uh, there we go. Sweet. We got that going. Very nice. Uh, Moby says, for me, it's nearly in brand new condition, but I use it as desktop replacement, so it's at home all the time with a closed lid. Can't really judge it too well. Oh, gotcha. Iron Steel Fighting Man. You don't know, never mind. Okay, so... I have to type in a, a pin here. Can we just not do a pin? Let's just not do a pin. Uh, okay. I guess it's going to require me to do a pin, which is a little bit annoying. I guess it's Windows 11 settings, but... We'll set this up as a new device. All right, so I should go ahead and reposition this camera at this, well, not quite yet. I'll reposition the camera here in a moment, but let's take the bottom off first. Um, Right now, Windows is just getting logged in, and then we're going to take the bottom off. So, Now, one thing that I will say that's pretty interesting is uh, you can see on the thing right here, we've got tape over the top of the webcam by default. Isn't that interesting? So there's the webcam right there. So we're just going to try to get through all of this stuff. There's so many menus. I've clicked like 15 different menus now for Windows 11 just to get the laptop going. All right, so now I think it's going to do an update, I think. How much was the price? Uh, this laptop, Fisherman, was uh, $549, and it's still $549. Uh, link is in the video description if you want to check it out. So we are updating. That is a great sign. So we just gotta wait for that to go through, and I'm going. Ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tools out here for un, taking the bottom off here. What kind of screw we got? Looks like it's a little Phillips head. So let's test this one. See if it works well. That seems to be really snug, but let me try this one too. I don't think this one's going to work very well. Yeah, that one's not good. Okay, so we're going to go in. Uh, the last time you were doing something with crypto, is that still going on? Uh, I, I'm still invested in crypto. I think crypto is uh, it's it's going through some growing pains right now with the FTX like blunder, crash, bankruptcy, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
but uh, you know, I've got my hopes high still that it's going to come back. I think the technology is still really cool and the user adoption will eventually kick in and that's when the price I think will really go up. Right now it's still a very speculative asset. Hey, we're inside of Windows. Look at that. We've already made some tremendous progress. So now that we're inside of Windows, we're going to go ahead and shut the device down and then take the bottom off. So shutting it down. Mr. Tech says, I'm from Iraq. I ordered the Acer Predator from Best Buy through a carrier. If the laptop doesn't work, I can't return it and I lose $1,000 plus shipping costs. Um, that would suck, but hopefully if it doesn't work, you'd also be able to get it repaired at like a laptop repair shop because most of the things are repairable. Um, including the thing that we had, I don't, we don't know what it was. You have to spend time diagnosing what the problem was, but you certainly would probably be able to get it fixed. The only thing is if it was like, you need a new motherboard, then that would really suck. Like that would royally suck so much. So, um, all right. So we're getting some screws off here. I always set the screws up around the side where the screw hole is. So it's easy to know where the screw goes because some of these screws are different lengths. The downside is sometimes you knock the screws off the table or something and then you have to go search for them under the desk. But if you're careful, it usually works out pretty well. Is Windows 11 worth it now? Um, so I've had Windows 11 on my laptop now for a little while. Uh, the only big downside is that it's really hard to disable Windows updates. It's The automatic automatic updates are really difficult to disable now compared to Windows 10. I really dislike automatic updates because I oftentimes lose data. Um, so this screw is not really interested in coming out. There we go. Like the magnet on this is nice. It really helps usually. But right there, it wasn't strong enough to get the screw to pull out for some reason. Uh, overall, overall, Windows 11, I'd say, is worth it. You're going to want to upgrade to Windows 11 anyway, eventually, because you get all the security updates, and all the latest drivers will only start working for Windows 11 eventually. You know, usually after like a year or something, people stop supporting the previous operating system. So I do recommend upgrading, even if the Windows updates is a little bit annoying. But Okay, so now we're going to see how hard it is to take the bottom off of this guy. Doesn't look like it'll be too bad. I just got to find the right place to insert. This and I got to try to judge. I think I think this whole bottom case comes up right across this whole thing. Do I get do I get all the screws? It's interesting there's no screws in the middle at all as far as I can tell. Also notice the in intellation uh, the intake for the vents here. It's pretty good. All right. So I'm going to try going in over here by the ports. Looks like there's a, just a little bit of a gap here, but... Hey, we're in! Alright, so that was not too bad. But, so I ended up coming, opening it, getting the initial pry up right here. And it's starting to get come loose. Alright, so I'm just going to go all the way around. The device now it's kind of hard to do this in a way that I don't knock the screws around and you guys can also see but just going around so there's a link to this iFixit kit in the video description down below if you need to get a tool kit for opening laptops up it does make it a lot easier if you have the proper tools for getting in and out of your laptop sometimes it's possible to use an ordinary screwdriver but Computer screws tend to be small and difficult to turn sometimes. So you really want a magnetic screwdriver, ideally.
Okay, so there's the bottom coming off. Bingo. All right, and you can see where you would install that two and a half inch drive. So let me go ahead and show you that. So the fisherman says, Mr. Tech, I have had a Predator Triton 500 for three years now. At first I did not like it, but the service from Acer from my own mistakes made the laptop so good, the laptop grew on me. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, so this machine could really use uh, more memory. And I'm curious if they have one stick of eight, eight gigs in this machine, or if there are uh, two sticks of four. It'd be better performance if it's two sticks of four, but it's gonna be more expensive to upgrade if there's, you know, um, if you have to buy, yeah. So this has one stick of eight, so all you need is one other stick of eight. So it's a little bit cheaper now to do your memory upgrade, which is nice. Um, let me just pull this off real quick and see what memory this is. So if you wanted to match the memory exactly on this unit, let me see if I can get it really close to the camera. Get it focused in here. Okay, so that's the existing memory that we have in the unit if you wanted to try to order the exact same type. But uh, it's Samsung 8 gig 1RX16 PC4 3200. So I think it's DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, uh, Samsung 1RX16. So if you want to get the exact same type, there you go, and you can get yourself an upgrade with only an 8 gig stick now. All right, so just a brief overview of what we have going on inside here. We have the battery right here. I should have unplugged the battery before I took the memory out, but it's what's done is done. Um, the Wi-Fi module is right here. We've got the memory cover case. This, so this is designed to kind of shroud the memory and act, I believe, as like a heat sink. And um, so, let me just make sure this is in the right spot here. There we go. And uh, there is the fan. So you have the right fan, the left fan. I believe this, I'm not sure which one's gonna be the GPU and the CPU. I believe this is gonna be the GPU. All right, now, sadly, I really should have taken the battery off of this unit uh, or unplugged it when I was moving these parts around because I did just see a little spark happen. Now, I'm not sure if you guys were able to see it, probably weren't able to see it, but this is a good learning lesson for me to always take the battery and unplug it when you're removing any kind of components. But I'm hoping everything is still gonna work just fine. But there was just a little spark and a little bit of smoking that happened, okay? So don't know if it's gonna be a negatively affecting the laptop at all, but if there are issues with the laptop, I'm gonna have to blame myself for messing it up. Um, that said, that's why you unplug the battery before you move any components on the inside. All right. What's the TDP on this? I'm not sure yet. I'm very curious to find out. Um, now, this is the SSD slot uh, right here. So this is the SSD. If you're trying to get a new one, you're going to need to get the short little SSDs, and I believe these only go up to uh, one terabyte in total size. They don't get bigger. Now, it looks like there is another SSD slot over here on the far side, so you could keep the 256 gig and just install a new SSD right here. So I'm guessing there's a little screw in here. Let's see. So one of these screws ought to do it. I think 
it sh there should be another little mounting screw to, to be able to put it in here, but this can fit either a short SSD or a long one. Um, so you have, you have options if you're gonna upgrade it for the alternate SSD size. Do you think if I buy better RAM memory on a laptop, it will give me any better performance? I know some 3200 is CL22, does it matter much? Um, you probably won't get much additional performance, uh, except in certain memory sensitive games. Um, so if you're playing a, a very memory sensitive game like CSGO or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, maybe Hitman 3, uh, you'll probably see like up to like a 5 or 10% performance improvement in those games. But very GPU bound games, you probably won't see any kind of memory performance increase. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show you how this 2.5 inch drive would fit in here. Let's see if we can figure out the mounting for it. Okay, so it looks like the 2.5 inch drive would go right in here. All right, and then if you wanted to install that two and a half inch drive, you're gonna to need to also use this ribbon cable. So this ribbon cable would go on the back of the two and a half inch drive, or I guess it's the, the, the front of it, but basically the ribbon cable gets plugged in like this, um, and then it gets shuffled into that slot right there, and let me see if I can zoom in on this so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm showing you here. Can you guys see this okay? Um, all right, so basically you would put your hard drive in here. I don't think I have any extra drives right now, but basically you'd put, put it in here. You'd be plugged in just like that. Then you put this down and you screw this on right like that, and then this blue thing right here, um, again, not sure how well you guys can see this, but this blue end, this blue end of the ribbon would go inside of this other port on the motherboard that says HDD on it. Um, and that's where you'd connect it. And that's how you would install the two and a half inch drive bay. Again, be sure to unplug the battery before you move anything inside of the chassis. All right. What's up, Robotic Venom? Welcome to the live stream. All right. Let's go ahead and put the case back on. And we didn't unplug the battery. This is secure. All right, we're gonna have to find out if we have messed anything up when that spark fizzle happened, but we're gonna pop this back together. Just to verify that we're all seamless all the way around before we start screwing things back in. And we are. All right. Let's go ahead and start screwing this puppy back together. I see lots of people hopping into the live stream. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. I am live, so feel free to ask them in the chat. I am monitoring the chat right now. Um, I won't be able to monitor the chat as much a little bit later on, maybe when I start playing games on this machine, but I'm going to do my best. So next up in the live stream, we're going to check out the Cinebench R20 and 23 score, and then we're going to... Do the Time Spy 3D Mark on the machine, and we'll be able to get a better idea of the TDP of the CPU and the GPU from doing these tests. 
And then I'm not expecting much because it's obviously an entry level laptop. Um, I'm guessing the TDP on the GPU is something like 55 or 60, somewhere in that range. Okay, all of the screws are in. Let's go ahead and plug this thing back in and fire it up. Hopefully everything runs fine still. Lights are on. Lenovo screen is coming back. Let's go ahead and reposition this camera back into the front again. So we're going to... Let me go ahead and put this to this mode. There we go. And because this is going to, I'm going to need to rearrange all of these. All right. And we're going to need to shorten everything to be about there. Just bring this in a little bit more, just like that. All right, that looks pretty good. And there we go. We're gonna get this. camera all lined up and then swap to it. All right. Shaboom. All right, so right off the bat we can see the display is actually pretty colorful and fairly bright. Um, I don't think it's a super bright display, but this is looking pretty good in my opinion. Let me go ahead and grab my HDD. This should have some of my files on it for benchmarking. Assuming I didn't delete them or remove them or something. I think there should be still in here. Okay. The 120 hertz display has got to be 250 nit, 64% sRGB. I reckon. I don't know. Uh, it it could be, it seems about 250 nits, but it might be a little bit better than that, maybe 280 or something. All right, so we're going to need to get Steam set up. All right. And we're going to need... the bench R20 and R23. All right, let's go ahead and do check for Windows updates. Oh yeah, we got a lot of Windows updates to do still. Going to download now. We've got fiber internet here, so hopefully it's good. All right. Uh, so I'm checking out the chat here. Looks like I missed some questions. Uh, Crest of Honor says, welcome back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back to streaming again. I would imagine the new 40 series laptop GPUs will be shown off at CES in January and then released sometime in February to June. Uh, yeah, that's my estimate as well. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Um, but I think, I think the 4070, 4080 will probably be released probably with pre-orders at the end of January into February, and then you actually get it probably late February, March. Um, but it's going to be pretty expensive getting all of those things. You can see Windows Update is going to take a while. 
But we can go ahead and get all the other stuff downloaded as well. So we're going to need to try to sign in here. I don't know why it's not responding. Not letting me. Yeah, the keyboard's working. Okay, there we go. And this is just my test account. So I need to verify that everything's good here. Shanneker, Mishra says, I missed the unboxing. You can always go back to check out the unboxing. My guess is the GPU is 75-ish watts. Uh, maybe it peaks at that wattage. Um, we'll see. Looks like it's wanting me to do this again. Michael Dexter, it depends on your budget. 3060 will last you way longer than a 3050 Ti. I recommend going for the 3060, not 3050. If you can afford it, 3070 Ti is even better. But those are 1400 plus. So robotic, there's actually a 3070 Ti from MSI, uh, the, the, the Katana, that's 1249 right now. And it comes with an i9-12900H. The link is in the description. I went over it at the beginning of this uh, live stream. It's probably a low TDP laptop, so I wouldn't expect too much from those components, but those are still really strong components. So, especially for the price, really powerful potential. I'll bet you the GPU is probably only like 90 to 100 watts in that chassis though. Um, so I would say, the thing about the 3050 Ti is that you can get it in a much cheaper system. So if your budget's less than $600, you're pretty much going to have to go with the 3050 Ti. Uh, unless you get really lucky. I think we saw one third RTX 3060, uh, an Acer Nitro 5 on Walmart, I think was $599, only on Black Friday, and now it's $800. I have a link in the description to that. Um, but yeah, I would agree a 3060 should last you a fair bit longer than a 3050 Ti, but not too much longer. I think it's another 20, 25% more powerful. The thing is, well, I guess it depends. It really depends on the chassis too. The 3060 can vary a lot in performance. Um, Cause if, if the wattage on a 3060 is all the way up to 130 watt, you can really get a bigger bang for the buck from the 3060. So it just, it just really depends, but in a similar wattage system, like a low watt 3060 and the 3050 Ti in a low watt system, that's where the performance is going to be a smaller jump. So, I was thinking about purchasing a laptop with a Ryzen 5 plus in 3050 itself. Not a hardcore gamer, just a casual type when I get time from my job. Yeah, Shankar, Mishra, you're going to be able to do a ton of gaming on a 3050 Ti. I mean, if you're just doing 1080p gaming, you're not looking to do QHD gaming, then, uh, and also, if you go with a 3050 Ti, you're going to have to understand that the, the lower amount of VRAM in a 3050 Ti means you might have to run textures at lower settings. And also, when newer games come out, a 3050 Ti might not be able to even play them eventually because of the lower VRAM, but it just depends. Uh, right now, there's pretty much all games out there that have uh, an option to run on only 4 gigs of VRAM. So. All right. 
right? So I can tell that we are running into our eight gigs of RAM in this machine, kind of like slowing down some just general tasks. Because normally I think some of these things would be able to happen simultaneously a little bit better, right? Because when you run into using all, all of your RAM in your machine, you're going to end up just uh, having to shuffle back and forth and share share that. So let me see how our memory usage is. It says we're at 4.7 out of 5.9 gigs used. Uh, of course, that's left over um, from what Windows is using. Um, I don't know if this is actually accurate because I would think we would be using all of it just doing these installs. But I suppose if we got a browser open, it would probably be doing even more. Um, The older laptop was future proof. My older Acer Predator 17X is from 2017, has a GTX 1080 and 160 TDP. It has been underwater and is still working. Nice. Yeah, a, uh, a GTX 1080 is still a very respectable GPU. Um, my buddy has uh, my old GTX 1080 and he can play all of the games that we play together and he has over 100 FPS still, I think, on almost all of the games that we play, like Apex Legends and stuff like that. You know, it's it's a really great game, especially if you mainly just play lighter weight titles. Um, I'm sure if you played something more like God of War, you know, it's going to be a lot more challenging on an older GPU, but you should still be able to get it to run smoothly if you just drop the settings down a little bit. Katana 1249 is a solid deal for sure. Spending 150 for the classic Legion 5i Pro 3070 Ti at 13.99 will be worthwhile. Jump for a much more well-rounded laptop. Wish there was a referral link for it though. Um, so, Robotic Venom, I I think they uh, increased the price on that one up to I think $1,500 now. When I was I did, I was briefly checking it, um, and I found a way I think to make it work to do the referral link, but I, I mean, I don't mind people not, you know, obviously get what you can, and I'll try to get my referral links as best I can, so you buy whatever you can buy, that's the best deal. Um, and I do think a 3070 Ti, if it was uh, only $1,300, it's a $150 increase like it was for a Legion 5 Pro, that was that's a no-brainer, much better deal, because you're gonna get a better quality screen, better quality chassis than that Katana for sure, so I'm 100% I'm with you on that. But some people have like hard set, um, hard set price limits, right? They want to stop at twelve forty nine. That's their max budget, and they won't spend a dollar more, or you know whatever. So, um, just depends. Depends on what your budget is. Uh, for twelve forty nine, that katana should be a pretty good deal. I think my my other big concern with that MSI katana is the display quality because they may have stuck a cheap display in that laptop with really high-end hardware which would really suck to have to deal with that um, uh, crest of honor says i wish i had gotten the 3070 version of the legion 5 pro but the 3060 is fine yeah, I think the 3070 is the sweet spot in terms of performance bang for the buck. At least it was um, like a year ago. Right now it might not be. It depends on the price of each individual thing. So we got Time Spy installed. We've got Windows Update downloading. We're at 53% right now. Um, YouTube, are we still live streaming? Because it's saying... Interesting. Let me know if the live stream is still smooth. It was saying that something was going on with the live stream. Um, but I'm curious. Because it looks like it's supposedly still going just fine. But just let me know in, in, the, uh, in the chat if you have any problems or if it's still looking good. MK says, Miss your videos, bro. Love the unboxing and benchmarking. It's your staple. Yeah, it's, it's pretty... Yeah, I, I love the I love doing the live streams just because I don't have to do too much editing after the fact. So, still streaming, just a bit of a stutter. I wonder if it's because I'm downloading all this stuff right now on 
the uh, the Lenovo here. I wouldn't think so, but we are using a lot of bandwidth and things are downloading really fast. So that's a good sign at least. Um, let's see if we can go ahead and get uh, MSI Afterburner installed and get that configured. I am not able to do what I want to do at the same time right now. I would say it's primarily because of the low 8 gigs of RAM. Um, why don't you use something like Revy OS? I don't know what Revy OS is, and you got me curious now. Revy OS. Revy OS attempts to speed up the operating system and should that should have been easy and simple. With the main audience being gamers and power users, enthusiasts. Interesting. I wonder I wonder how well it works. I don't know how well it works, so. Have you used it, Finnan? Okay, it looks like the Windows update has been downloaded, so that's great. We're at 99%. So, you can see we've got quite a few different system updates here. So we're going to try to get through these before we do the benchmarks. I'm always tempted to just proceed anyway, but it'll probably just take a few more minutes, hopefully, to get these done. And we've got to download and install some other stuff anyway. So we've got to get MSI Afterburner installed and configured. All right. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting to me that this is still locked out. Let's see if I can open another window. I can. Let's do... Where is it? MSI Afterburner. This is not the latest version of MSI Afterburner. Let me just go ahead and download a new version because it's been a few months since I downloaded. We just want to start. I don't want to deal with all this stuff. Okay, uh, MSI Afterburner Guru 3D. Is this the latest version, really? 4.65. What do I have? I have 4.63. Yeah, it looks like this is the latest version of the beta, so let's just go ahead and download that. Actually, 4.64 has a stable, so let's do that one. Um, so I'm using the touchpad right now, and the touchpad is definitely like a plastic surface, but it seems to be very responsive. And you can see I'm, I'm scrolling and it keeps the inertia well and it scrolls smoothly. So that's fantastic for a budget laptop. Looks like we're done downloading.
subtract all of this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this onto my. Whoop. We're going to go ahead and go here. We're going to grab this. And we're going to paste this in here. And we're going to delete the old afterburner. There we go. So once we get Afterburner installed, we have to configure it so that it does the display overlay um, in the games and applications so we can see the power limits and the, the, the clock speed, the temperature, all of that, which to me is one of the most interesting things about testing these laptops to see how they perform under the hood. That you know, a lot of people don't really pay attention to those things, but I like I like checking those things out. So, um, okay. Ben and H says I use it on the same laptop you're using, and it has no it has no bloatware. Okay. Did you? Yeah. Revy OS typically has minimal impact on benchmark performance in games, but it works better on older machines and speeds up overall performance in the operating system. Interesting. Um, is 8 gig of RAM even enough, even for a budget? I think it, 8 gigs enough if you're on an extreme budget and you just want to like watch Netflix or browse the web or something. You're just like, that's all you want to do. Um, and it, it's enough in the sense that like you'll be able to do those things, but you would almost always be able to do those things smoother or more efficiently if you had at least. 12 gigs of RAM, probably 16 is ideal, but 12 is like the minimum um, in my mind. But usually you don't get two 6 gig sticks, usually you get two 8 gig sticks. So usually jump straight to 16. But, um, but 12 gig theoretically should have been enough. Okay, um, so we got Afterburner installed. Here's Afterburner now. So we, if you want to know how to set up Afterburner to be on screen, then here is how you do it. You can see that we have the AMD Radeon graphics and then we have RTX 3050 Ti graphics. And um, we're going to go into benchmark will be nine and zero. Oh, this looks a little different, okay. Nice. All right, so our GPU, so you can see right here, GPU one is AMD. GPU two is the RTX 3050 Ti. So we might have to update our drivers to be able to see everything as options in here. Sometimes they don't show up. But uh, you can see we have GPU memory usage. We'll do show on screen. Go down a little bit. GPU 2 core clock speed, GPU 2 power limit, and then we want to see if there's a, if it's if the GPU is being limited by power, temperature, or voltage, or no load limit, which means it's just not being used enough. All right, and then we want CPU temperature right here, which will show us our hottest temperature. And then we're gonna want CPU usage. So that shows us how much we're being utilized on our CPU. And then our CPU clock speed, which will show us our highest clock speed. And then we also wanna see the CPU power being drawn. And in this case, since we only have eight gigs of RAM, I think I'm gonna have it show us the RAM usage for the general 8 gigs of RAM. Normally we don't ever run into that being an issue, but yeah. Now we're also going to do our 1% low and our frame rate averages so we can get a better idea of if we're stuttering or not. Alright, so Afterburner is now set up. Looks like we are Almost done with this, 35% done installing Windows 11. 
I mean, this is, I'm sure, what is taking up most of the system usage right now. A lot of people might want to upgrade the RAM if they only have 8 gigs. How important is it to get a matching RAM type? Um, you want to get at least the, the exact, uh, usually the exact same speed and memory configuration. I don't think it has to be the exact same brand, but generally speaking, you want to get identical. That's If you want to be guaranteed to be problem free, you want to get an exact matching, perfect match. Um, otherwise, you might run into random bugs or issues with your RAM, or it may just not load at all. Um, so that's why I showed you the RAM stick on this machine earlier in the live stream so that you can get the exact match. Um, I think it was a Samsung One XR16 stick of 8 gigs. So, we've, so, so far in the live stream, we've done an unboxing. We took the bottom of the chassis off. Uh, at the very beginning of the live stream, I went over the top five deals on gaming laptops right now. Um, and there are links in the description to that. Uh, net, so far, just recently, in the last few minutes, we've just got going on the Windows update. And we're trying to get that done before we do some benchmarks. We've got all the benchmarks, I believe, downloaded and installed. Um, one thing I do have to do, because this room, my studio room, is kind of, kind of gets warm. So I'm going to get the fan going here again. Because we want this room to at least be a reasonable temperature. It's probably 80 something degrees in here right now. Ambient temp. I should probably get an ambient temperature reader, uh, sorry, a thermometer. I should probably get a thermometer so that I know the exact ambient temperature in this room because that will make a big difference when I do benchmarking and I read the temperatures. Uh, Jem says, just picked this up for my son for Christmas. Can't wait to give it to him. Dude, congrats, dude. That's, I think your son's going to love it. Um, I'll have to go back and forth and watch the whole thing. Just join this, and this is the first video I've seen for this specific laptop. Cool. Well, welcome to the live stream, Jim. I hope uh, <laughs> I hope he loves it. This thing's gonna be able to play pretty much everything. You just have to be, your son will just have to be willing to turn the settings down a little bit on, in some games. So he will have no problem playing Roblox now. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Roblox is too complicated. Maybe some of the mini games can get insane. I don't know, but I, I haven't I haven't played much Roblox, but I know that it's uh, fairly simplistic graphics uh, by default. I'm gonna go ahead and change the battery on this um, on this camera here. So let me go ahead and switch the camera angle real quick and swap this because it's starting to get low. to uh, readjust that again. All right. There we go. Bingo. All right. So Windows Update's at 61% done installing now. Still waiting for that last 40%. Uh, Shanker Mistra says, what about the HP Pavilion laptops with the same configuration? So HP laptops, they can be good. I, I think this one's better. I would probably recommend, like I, I like the little more advanced Omen series laptops from HP compared to their ultra budget pavilion series. Try to get this. There we go. All right. It's messing with the door there. Um, so, so the HP pavilion series, 
I have reviewed them twice, and I thought my impressions of them were that the, the one screen on the HP Pavilion was only a 60 hertz display, and that was probably the biggest drawback to that one. Um, and overall, I think I like the keyboard, mouse, and overall feel of the build quality of this Lenovo IdeaPad better. So that's it. I haven't seen HP's updated HP Pavilion since like 2021. So maybe it's gotten better since then. Um, so it's hard to say. Hard to say for sure until I actually see the latest one in hand. I'm going to go ahead and remove McAfee. gets working again can you guys hear me again okay all right sweet so um, I I actually I liked the HP Victus chassis I thought that was a surprisingly well done chassis but I don't know about uh, the configurations that were available to it and the price point, it seemed less advantageous. Like the price on the Victus was higher for the same specs as, uh, as this one. So let's go to update. So I would still, I would still pick this one. This one or the Gigabyte G5 over the HP Victus for the like specs for the money, you know? We're at 73% now. This idea pad does have better build than the HP Vic, Vic tools. <laughs> okay. The way you spelt that was a little interesting. If you are not on a budget, do you recommend a 1440p laptop or a 1080p? Oh, definitely a 1440 QHD display. Maybe even a 16x10 2560 x 1600 display which is like a higher resolution and a little bit taller display. That's what I have on my Legion 7i. Um, and uh, I do think it makes a big difference um, having a QHD display, even in a laptop size. Um, but at, at a 15 inch size, it can go both ways. If you want to save some money, the 1080p screen doesn't look bad. But like on a 17 inch display, bigger displays, you can really start seeing the pixels if you only have like a 1080p display. So that's where I would say going QHD uh, is the sweet spot. I, I do think 4K displays can look really good on laptops, but that's primarily because when you go to a 4K display, they almost always have really high brightness and color gamut. And realistically, as long as you have the high brightness and color gamut, QHD is enough pixels per inch to not see the pixels on the laptop display because you really aren't you know, getting super close on the laptop displays, in my opinion. So, the extra sharpness and more screen space makes a 1440p screen better. Also, 1440p screens tend to be higher quality and have higher color gamut. Um, yes, generally, more expensive and higher color. Yeah, the, those generally are going to be true, but 
1080p displays usually have ultra high refresh rates or it can get higher for less money. I'll say that much, especially if you want to get like a 240 hertz um, or 360 hertz or even Alienware does like 480 hertz refresh rates now on their laptops. Though I think the only game that you'd be able to even go that high of a frame rate on would be something like CSGO or maybe, maybe Valorant. I don't, depending on the machine, but QHD OLED in theory is fine, but they're not common. Yeah, usually OLEDs are in 4K. Um, and I, I did see a uh, 4K 240 hertz display, which would be awesome. That would be really cool. A lot of esports games could actually probably go that high on a really high-end machine. Um, but that wasn't in a laptop. That was a desktop monitor. So, But that's the highest spec refresh rate ultra high resolution display I've seen. Beside, except for the one I have behind me, right there, that lap, uh, that ultra wide is a QHD 5120 by 1440p. So that one's not quite as high a resolution as a 4K display, but it's pretty close. Um, I have to actually calculate it if it's a higher pixel density. Density. I don't think it is than a 4K display, but it might be. It's probably pretty close. All right. The fisherman asks, so did a big mistake. So I did a big mistake with my MSI Raider GE76 3080 laptop with only 1080p display. Should have waited. Can you upgrade just the display? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, but you have to be willing to take a, apart the panels. And you have to be willing to... Um, so you, you'd have to do some digging online to find a compatible display that you could use. Um, once you find a display that's compatible with the GE76 Raider, I know they do a QHD 240Hz display uh, for the Raider series. I'm not sure if it's in the 17-inch or just 15-inch. I know it's 15-inch, it does for sure. But if you could get a QHD 240Hz panel, you might be able to just order just that panel from some like laptop parts website or maybe like eBay. You get the laptop panel in, and then you have to take apart your laptop hinge um, you have to disconnect the connector for your existing panel, and then you need to demount, you know, the laptop panel from the chassis, and then you insert the new laptop panel and mount that in the chassis, uh, and then you connect the laptop pin down through the hinge into the motherboard, and that's how you would upgrade the panel on a laptop. It's fairly complicated. I haven't done it myself, but I have watched, um, some videos of some people doing it. Um, there may be even some tutorial or guide videos on how to upgrade it online somewhere. Like some laptop enthusiasts sometimes just throw them together for you. But uh, first you got to find a compatible panel for your laptop if you actually want to be able to upgrade it. Because you don't want to just buy any old panel because there are different sizes and different mounting methods for the laptops. So you want to make sure you get a compatible panel first as your top priority. Okay. Um, we are at 82%. Brandon Bridges says, non-budget, $13.99 is definitely budget. There are better laptops if you don't care about price. i um, thinking he's responding to Robotic Venom. Okay, this is why the best deal non-budget gaming laptop is the Legion 5 Pro 3070 Ti right now. Hard to argue with 16 by 10 QHD 500 net. Um, Robotic Venom, does that one have the QHD? Because the $12.99 version of that laptop only had 1080p, but... I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a really solid deal overall. Um, I don't know if it's the very best bang for the buck, but yeah, and, and at $13.99, that is definitely a lower, like a mid, kind of a mid-budget pricing. Um, yeah, but that's a really great bang for the buck. Okay, so Lego Bobrick says, yo, I got an Asus Zephyrus M15 the other day, and I'm having severe overheating issues, like my GPU would go to 90 degrees uh, from gaming. I don't know what to do since I already checked it for dust and it seems clean. Um, so, Lego Bob Bricks, number one thing I would do is make sure all your drivers are up to date. 
So, because sometimes if you have outdated firmware or drivers on your machine that uh, maybe it's not power limiting your laptop GPU, how it should be power limited, because usually laptop GPUs will start to throttle at like 85 or 87 degrees. Um, that said, it just depends. Um, then you probably do want to try vacuuming out the bottom if it's not a newer one, then maybe there's a chance for dust to get inside it and you just can't see the dust inside the fans. Um, but it has to be a fairly significant buildup of dust to start increasing the temperatures. Um, and, uh, and the last thing you might be able to do is you could throttle it yourself, um, depending on which power mode you're in. Like if you're, I noticed that if you're in like a, a low noise power mode, like you're in like the quiet mode, sometimes those have the highest temperatures on the laptop because they're trying to run the fans at a really low decibel level and they're just not moving enough air to increase the airflow enough to keep the temperature down. So um, I think ideally you'd want to keep your GPU temperature below 80 would be the ideal range. Uh, but 85 is not necessarily terrible, but going to 90 is definitely on, on the warmer side. Um, so, and, and uh, another thing you can do is install um, little laptop legs, like a laptop stand, to keep your laptop elevated to increase airflow, um, or to prop up your uh, the back of the laptop. They have little laptop legs you can buy from Amazon. Um, I've got them on my Legion 7i. I can show you what they look like here. Um, let's see if I can do this without losing the live stream, but I think you can see that, right? Right here, see that? This thing just pops out and you can sit the laptop up on it. And it raises the back of the laptop up about an inch and a half. And that should really help increase airflow as well. And those things cost like $10 for a set of two. So, and they've been on my machine for months now and they've been yeah, I use them. I use them when I'm gaming, if uh, if I'm doing something really intensive. I don't have it propped up right now, though. I probably should, because it's it is live streaming right now. But I don't know. Those are all the things I would do to try to reduce my temperatures. Um, if my temperatures were getting above 90 on a, on a GPU, Robotic Venom says, uh, yeah, the price. Is absurd. You're jumping from fourteen hundred dollars to over three grand. How is fourteen hundred dollars considered budget when it's one hundred fifty watt, thirty seventy Ti with one of the best displays? Yeah, robotic venom. I, I feel I feel you. I mean, you've got a good, a really good point there. I think that's a great thirteen ninety nine for a thirty seventy Ti Legion Five Pro. That's a good deal. Um, Brian Bridges. I'd usually consider a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to be mid range budgets for gaming laptops. Um, yeah, I would, I would, I mean, I know, I know, I get what both of y'all are saying here. Um, Brandon is saying that, you know, under $1,500 is more of a budget range, but what Robotic Venom is saying is that, like, the Legion 5 Pro with a 3070 Ti at $1,400 with a QHD 500 nit display, it's hard to get much better than that. Even if you, if you go to a 3080 Ti, sure, but it's probably going to be like $800 or $1,000 more and only like a 10, 15% performance improvement, which is a huge jump. So it is possible to get something better for, you know, more powerful, but still, it's it's far from the ideal bang for the buck if, if that mid-range is so good, you know? So, um, Buy the IETS 500 laptop cooler. Yeah, so a laptop cooler or a laptop razor is good. I think it's good, best to raise the back of the laptop first before buying a laptop cooler. It all depends on how low of a temperature you're really targeting, you know? So, yeah, so it's 94% uh, yet now, so we're almost there. We're going to restart. Gem says, do you think the 4080 will come down in price with the XTX launch? I purchased everything to build my first PC, but I haven't purchased the 4080 because of the price. I want ray tracing, and I want to stream. Um, 
I'm not sure if it's going to come down. I wouldn't call myself an expert on desktop tech pricing. I'm focusing primarily on laptops. Um, but obviously with more competition, the Radeon series, if it launches at, at better price points, that uh, at the very least will cause more competition for NVIDIA, which is great. And, uh, and if the RTX 4080s are not selling well enough, then what you'll see is sales. You know, they'll drop like a hundred dollar rebate or mail-in rebate or cash rebate or whatever. They'll do those first because a lot of people don't redeem them. And then once they once they try that and if it's still not selling well enough, then yeah, they might actually reduce the sticker price of the RTX 4080. We'll see. Pickle skin, what would be a good durable laptop for my autistic 12-year-old daughter? The Dell Rugged is crazy pricey, and would the Asus Tough? Is there any others? So the, I wouldn't call the Asus Tough probably that much more durable than any normal laptop. Um, my recommendation, uh, Pickle Skin, would be to if you if you buy from Best Buy, if you're in America, America, you can buy from Best Buy with the Total Tech Protection Plan. And that'll give you two years of accidental coverage. So if she drops it off a desk or it falls and breaks, you should be able to get it repaired for whatever laptop it is. Um, and uh, so the Total Tech program from Best Buy costs $200 for a year. Um, it gives you discounts on certain tech products. And you get that two-year warranty coverage on all the tech products that you buy, which to me is an insane, insane deal because I buy a lot of tech products. I don't know. Um, yeah, that would that would to me be what I would recommend most. Uh, making, sh but you want to double check with the Best Buy salesman, whatever you're checking out. Maybe in case I misunderstood anything, but double check it. Um, but it should it should cover accidental drops and bangs. So something like the Lenovo uh, Idea Pad here, if you're looking for a budget gaming laptop, if you get something like this for five forty nine, and it's going to be cheaper to replace if it does break eventually. And then um, if you get that two-year accidental protection, that should help a lot in case it, it breaks, it falls and breaks. All right. Um, Gizmo, what do you think of the upcoming 18-inch Razer and Alienware laptop? Should be interesting. It might just be 17-inch laptops with 16 by 10, though. I don't know. Interesting. I'll have to check them out. I, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and do a quick... Search. All right. Um, Razer 18 inch laptop. Ooh. Let's check this out. All right. So this was announced November 10th. So it's been announced for a little while. It's the first time I've seen it. But uh, the Razer Blade 14, 15, and 17 inch gaming laptops. Yeah, so this is going to have the i9 13900HX. It's going to be 24 cores, 32 threads. Um, yeah, they don't really talk about much here. And I don't know if this is a leak or if this is official. It says it's a desktop class CPU designed for the laptop BGA package. I don't know how accurate that is. At the very least, it wouldn't be running at at desktop level specs or even close to it because the power output is just too insane. And usually HX, isn't that a laptop acronym anyway? So I'm pretty sure it'd be a laptop processor, not a desktop. Okay. It's still unclear when this Raptor Lake C mobile CPU lineup is going to launch. A late 2022 launch. Huh. Okay. So this is basically just a leak 
is what this was. Interesting. Well, I'm curious. That that makes me very curious to see what what that's going to look like. That could be really awesome. Um, okay, we are ready to restart. We are restarting now. Wee. We will restart anyway. Wow, you can really see my LED lights in the reflection of that screen. Woo. Crazy. 13900X. Apparently Alienware is also making an 18 inch laptop. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one as well while we wait for this. So Huh. Yeah, I don't think that's the I don't think that's the latest uh, leak here. But um, I actually used to have one very similar to this. I, this is not, this is the old one, isn't it? Yeah, this is like, this is like throwback. This was a immersive 18.4 inch full HD true life display. Oh my God. How much did this machine weigh? This had the GTX 980M graphics. Wow. But it had 16 gigs of VRAM still back then. That's pretty impressive. I'm trying to see. I don't see the weight. <laughs> Massive storage. Store. Store. You have four, four HD slots. HDD slots in this laptop. That is a monster of a machine. Um, okay, maybe here's an updated article. Only seven hours ago. All right, so this Alienware 18 series Suddenly vanished after 2015. Yep. However, the 18-inch flagship will be back in 2023. Dell recently teased their return with a video tweet. All right, so this is the video tweet. Huh. This laptop's gonna be so big, it's gonna cover the whole city. That's hilarious. Um, well, Word on the Street is going to have the i9-13900HX processor. Let me see. Yeah, it's going to be 20. So this 13900HX processor is going to be 24 cores, 32 threads, with 8 high-performance cores, and 16 Gracemont efficiency cores. That's interesting. So still 10, uh, still a 10 nanometer process. That's too bad. I really wish Intel would drop the nanometers to like at least a seven nanometer process. We'd get a lot more power efficiency if they could actually pull it off in our laptops, but. Okay. Anyway, well, I would say my first impressions and thoughts on on that is that's that's a really cool idea. Um, going back to 18-inch laptops, especially now that the form factor on all the laptops have shrunk because the bezels have dropped dramatically in size, right? And uh, so basically that means that an 18 inch gaming laptop could be the same size as a 17 inch 
laptop from like a year and a half, two years ago because um, of all the design improvements that happened back then. Um, so you can see we're at 3% Windows Update um, after one restart already. So it's going restarting more than once here. Um, so overall, I don't know if I would get an 18 inch. Like if I had, um, if I just wanted a desktop replacement, then maybe. Uh, especially if the 18 inch laptop offered, you know, a, a noticeably awesome Im Im improvement in performance, right? Because if you're going to go that big, you'd expect also to have better performance, to make more room on the inside of the laptop to maybe have better cooling and have high, really high TDPs. So if I'm going to go with a big beefy thing, it better give me big beefy performance too. Um, I guess that's my thought because why would, I mean, why would I want to give up having something sleek and portable um, if it's still the same performance level? So, Jazzy says, oh, I have this laptop. Nice. So, Pickleskin says, I burned out an Asus Zephyrus G14 in one week playing Star Citizen. Uh, well, that that is just a um, bad luck, is what I would call that. Um, you know, because gaming laptops can easily last a really long time. Uh, for many, many years, for many, many hours every day of usage. So I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't expect that to be normal. You know, and since it was after only a week, I'm assuming you're able to get it replaced with the, at least the, the warranty, if not the return period. So... Mari Sano says, what did you do so far? So, so far in the video, we took the laptop apart. We went over the best deals of the day. We've done Windows Update and we installed the latest benchmarking. We're just waiting for Windows Update to finish. And then we're going to hop into a couple of benchmarks on the machine. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be able to, to check out those. Check out the CPU and GPU performance, a preliminary test, basically. Asus has a lot of issues according to Northbridge Fix. What is uh what is Northbridge Fix? And I think the amount of issues will probably vary a lot depending on which model. Northbridge Fix. He's a looks like he's another YouTuber. Looks like he makes videos repairing, about repairing stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I'm sure that uh, it varies a lot from laptop to laptop in terms of the amount of things you have to get, re get repaired. Um, are you done benchmarking it? No, I have yet to do the benchmark because we're waiting for Windows Update to finish first. I think you have the Toshiba SSD. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't check the brand of the SSD. I did check it out um, in the earlier in the live stream. I didn't. I didn't check for sure though. Um, but we did look at it earlier when we had the cover off. So maybe if you look in the back of the live stream, you might be able to see which SSD it is. Uh, what is the wattage of this GPU? I'm not sure. Um, but the 3050 Ti varies from about 45 watts on the lowest end up to like 75, I think, on the highest. So we're hoping it goes up to 75 watts is what we're hoping for, at least during the boost. Um, I yeah. didn't get that. Could you... Siri is trying to answer my question. <laughs> I don't know why. 
seems like a slow SSD. Yeah, sometimes Windows update takes a long time because this was like the cumulative Windows 11 update and those can some take, sometimes take an hour even on a faster SSD because it's more of a Windows issue, but it could be a slower SSD too. I mean, this is a budget gaming laptop, so I, I don't know. I haven't, haven't tested the SSD, but almost all of the SSD... If you have, I have never owned a slow SSD before because they all have... Even for a slow SSD, it's still fast compared to the old hard drives, usually. But I don't know. This is a, this could be a super budgeted SSD that's just really, really slow. I don't know. Uh, what is the downsides of this laptop, you think? Because it is too cheap. So um, <clears throat> let me pull up the... Let me pull up the listing for this laptop. So... Just looking at the specs, the downsides for this machine are going to be the 120 hertz display not being as fast as, say, 144 or 240 hertz. The display will also have lower nits brightness, and I'm not sure if it has any ghosting or not yet because um, I haven't gotten to play anything on the laptop yet, but I'm thinking there probably won't be much ghosting, I don't think. It seems to be fairly responsive, but we'll we'll see. Um, another downside to this laptop is only eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. Both of those are really small, very low, so you probably would want to upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs. And earlier in this live stream, I did show you the exact RAM module that you can match up to get if you just want to buy one RAM module instead of. Um, two new ones, you'd have to get a, a Samsung 8 gig 1RX16 uh, RAM module 3200 megahertz and that would that should match up just fine um, and uh, and then this machine does have a spot to upgrade the the SSD or a hard drive a two and a half inch drive or it has a spot to put in another M.2 SSD as well. So you have two ways you can upgrade the storage, um, but you can't do both of those because they share the same location on the motherboard. So you can either get a two and a half inch SSD to add to it or a two and a half inch HDD, which would be a little cheaper, um, just to add some more storage space for say some games or videos, pictures, music, stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, for the, for the budget, this machine provides a lot of bang for the buck. A six core, fairly good CPU, and then a 3050 Ti, and the keyboard, mouse, and trackpad, all of that is excellent. So overall, I think most people Looking for a budget gaming laptop, this should be near the top of the list, um, if not the very top. I, another option would be going for something like the Legion 5 with a 3050 or a 3050 Ti. A um, little bit better chassis and port selection on that laptop, I think. Um, and it might even get a better display, depending on which one you get. So, but you probably would have to pay a little bit more money, like 600, 650, maybe 700 for something like that. So, I think the main other alternative, if your budget is exactly 550, would be like this Gigabyte G5 with a 3050 Ti. You have a bigger SSD right out of the out of the gate. It's an Intel processor as well, um, and it's an 8 gig of RAM unit as well. So you're gonna have to upgrade the RAM in this one as well. Um, but the SSD is at least twice as big, so that's that's nice. So we're at 25%. We're getting there. There's a part of me that thinks I should just do the tests initially without going through the Windows update phase and say, we'll have to retest it when we do the benchmarking phase. Because <laughs> this takes a long time. And I'm just sitting here talking for like an hour while we're waiting for Windows update to update. But, I mean, it's cool hanging out with you guys. I like chatting. Okay. Robotic Venom says, since it's an NVMe SSD and not SATA, it should be plenty fast. 
Yeah, that's what I would I would tend to agree. I think this Windows update is just taking forever. Um, RAM and storage can always be upgraded later. Yeah, so that's kind of nice about this machine. You get to save money now, but you can invest in upgrades later on. Um, storage prices are amazing right now. Yeah, they're cheaper than they were. They got kind of expensive during the, the chip shortage there. Um, Madi Sano says, if I buy this, I can't even download Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War without upgrading the SSD. <laughs> yeah, some games are insanely large now. So, yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to deal with that. The 11400H will be faster in games, but it would be awesome to see the Gigabyte go head-to-head -head with this idea pad. Gigabyte battery is among the worst, though. 42 watt hour battery plus Intel is only three hours. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, looks like we're restarting again. Hopefully, we're going to go back into Windows now, but we'll see. This is the second time it's restarted. Oh, now it's going to 30%. Okay, so I guess it just needed to restart after installing some stuff. So we're continuing on. All right. Is it going to restart again? Oh, 48%. That was a nice jump. All right. Um, Call of Duty game storage is just terrible. They need to sort it out, honestly. Yeah, for real. Um, robotic Venom, it has less than three hours. Yeah. Yeah, I'll... A lot of the budget laptops, that is one way in which they save money by reducing the watt hour on the battery. Because um, a lot of people don't even use their laptop batteries that much. They just keep it plugged in all the time, so they won't even notice. But it just depends on the person. I'm going to grab a fresh drink of water here. Looks like we're restarting again. It's like the fourth restart. Okay, we're at 90% now. All right. Exciting. All right. Yeah, the 11400H will be faster in games. Um, I think that would be true, probably, except for certain titles. That's generally going to be true. Um, that said, is there a MUX switch on this machine? Probably not at this price point, but... It'd be interesting to check Lenovo's um, settings to see if we can turn that on or off. Because uh, if this does have a MUX switch and the Gigabyte does not, then this might actually be faster in eSports titles. I'm not sure. Interesting, the Gigabyte 42 watt hour battery is hot swappable. Yeah, it pops out with no tape or screws. It has pins that connect and spring, so it takes two seconds to pop it out old style. Yeah, that is pretty cool, Robotic Venom. I used to, I used to do that. <laughs> so back when I had laptops that did not have switchable graphics back in college, um, I had these HP laptops. I can't remember the name of it. But basically, they had a battery that was hot, uh, not hot swappable, but sw I mean hot swappable if you were plugged into the wall. But um, swappable if you were plugged in to, uh, yeah, swappable if you're plugged into the wall. And so I would have like three of them and I would be able to like cycle them in and out, uh, you know, throughout the day. And I would need probably two of them to get through my, all my day of classes because I would stack all my classes on like one day, have like 10 hours of class in one day. Then I have like nothing for like two days. So it was great having the swappable battery. I could just keep going all day. 
But I, if you're doing it on the fly without plugging into the wall, though, you have to shut down the laptop and then turn the laptop back on again, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, okay, we're, uh, we're getting into Windows here, so hopefully we can get these tests done. And yeah, so the laptop display, if I were to guess, I would say probably 250 to 270 nits would be my guess. I have an actual tester tool, but we'll be testing that for the um, we'll be testing that for the laptop review, not for this live stream. If you want battery, it's best to go AMD, best balance of battery and power. Yeah, that's because of the uh, AMDs on that seven nanometer process and Intel is still on 10 nanometers, so, or maybe even 12 nanometer for the older chips. So it really is better, or 14 nanometer maybe even for the older, older chips. So yeah, AMD is gonna provide a lot better battery life, typically. Um, okay. All right, so. Let's go to Steam. I also want to verify this is a 120 hertz display. Oh, I didn't have my brightness up to 100%. That is a nice boost in brightness. Awesome. Okay, so that just, that definitely made the screen feel more like 300 nits brightness, but it's probably not still. I don't know. I'm actually really curious now how, how, how bright it is, because that definitely that definitely boosted it. Okay, and you can see right here we're at 120 hertz refresh rate, 1080p. So that's fantastic. Let's open the Lenovo software up. And... Can I just be done? I'm not seeing any hybrid mode or anything over here, so... Enable GPU overclocking in performance mode. Oh, wow, you can do that. Sweet. You can even overclock the GPU. I'm just going to set it to the default. So this is, that's just what... Boom. So this is just the standard stock overclock of performance mode. That is fantastic. All right, so we're not going to do any more updates. And we've got the laptop in performance mode now. Let's get TimeSpy going and see how this goes. Let's make sure nothing is going on in the background, like a background process. Are we back? Testing, cool, all right. Yeah, I think the camera overheated actually. All right, looks like we're anti-malware executables popping up every now and then. We're probably doing a scan. Yeah, Lenovo Vantage software is interrupting, so 
know that you know we're still in the updating phase and some things in the background may take over some of the CPU resources I'm not sure, so even Windows updates going on in the background every now and then. What is this Zulu pa Platform X32 architecture? I wonder if that's related to 3D Mark now. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run this. We also want to get Afterburner going. Windows on go. And we want to start this one also with Windows Bing. All right. We are ready to run 3D Mark. Let's see how we do, Time Spy. Collecting system info. Here we go now. So, if you guys enjoy this live unboxing, please sure go down there and hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm shares this with more people. Um, so right now we're pulling 80, 85 watts on the GPU. That's pretty impressive. We're being power limited. So that means we're using as much juice as we possibly can. Um, and the GPU is hitting 1930. So I'm curious if we're going to stick to this 85 watt power limit this whole time. But that's certainly a higher pull than I was anticipating this laptop pulling. Um, and so this laptop is probably going to score a little bit better than most 3050 Ti laptops, I would think, because most laptops aren't going to be this high of wattage for 3050 Ti's. It's interesting, we're not getting the, the GPU temperature though. I wonder if I forgot to check that or if it's just not available. Okay, into the graphics test number two. So, so the point of this benchmark is primarily just to test the GPU performance exclusively. Um, we're isolating the GPU and loading the GPU to the maximum, and we're not taxing the, uh, the CPU much at all. And, I mean, so far, I am... I'm very impressed. Um, coming up after this test, where they, it does do a CPU specific test, which just focuses on the CPU. Um, and then once all of the tests are done for TimeSpy, we're also going to take a look at the Cinebench R23 score. So, Cinebench R, uh, sorry. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and get a range for different 3050 Ti laptops here. Um, wow. Yeah, so on Notebook Check, I'm just going to swap over to this real quick. Oh, I'm on the wrong. All right, we're going to go back here. Let me get this on the right tab.
So on here it's showing that the different the different clock speed range and we've been doing over 1800 1900 megahertz and doing 85 watts and that's higher than what notebook check even has as an option. I just wanted to point that out. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, the CPU right now is pulling 35 watts. It's hitting 4.2 gigahertz, 4.25 gigahertz, which is, I believe, the max boost clock. So that's really good. And we're at 84 degrees Celsius. Um, interestingly enough, it's only pushing the CPU to 40%, 50%, so 40 to, 48 to 50%. So that, I think something is wrong with the test or something is not being read correctly there. One of the two because that's not normal. All right, so a typical time spy score, the average is 5,400. And yeah, wow, we got 6,125 for our time spy score. So this is significantly above average for a 3050 Ti. Um, looks like the highest score notebook check has on the record is a Strix G17 with 6417. So that's an interesting, interesting score result. I wonder if you could, you could probably get a little bit higher if you tweaked the overclock a little bit more because it is boosting up to 85 watts. So maybe you could even take the overclock a little bit higher. Um, I'm not sure about the CPU score only being 5407. I think it might actually go higher if it wasn't actually fully utilizing all the cores. So the boost clock was high, but I'd have to actually check all the check marks and fiddle around with it more just to make sure that it's all being utilized to the max. So let's go ahead and run Cinebench now. And let me go ahead and, oh, did I show you guys the final score? Oh, yeah. Overall, overall, I'm very impressed. We got um, 6,100 approximately on this Legion uh, Lenovo IdeaPad, which is really good for a 3050 Ti. Wouldn't say it's the max possible, but it's 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 impressive for it being a, like a lowest possible budget gaming laptop. So, is it fairly? I'm fairly new to laptop gaming. Is it normal for a gaming PC to chug from the battery, even when plugged in? I believe what you mean is chug from the battery. You have to explain that a little better, attrition. What you mean, but I think you mean. Uh, having lower frame rate when you are, I'm going to cancel this run. I'll let it go in the background. It's whatever. I'm going to just, I just want to get HW info to open up here first. Um, it's normal that when you unplug a gaming laptop that the FPS drops. Does that make sense? Like it's that's that's a normal thing, um, but I don't know what you mean. It's supposed to chug even from the battery, even when plugged in. Like you should not be reducing your battery when plugged in. If that's happening, then you don't have a, bow, a powerful enough power adapter for your laptop, um, and you may need to like lower your performance settings or something. So that, or or get an updated power, upgraded power adapter. I know the Microsoft Surface um, laptop, like, did not come with a powerful enough power adapter, so that when you were like playing games on it or something, you would slowly lose battery juice, juice in your battery. So maybe that's what you're talking about. All right, so. All right, we're gonna run this again. Well, we got 3522 on our first Cinebench run. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, a little bit more, so you guys can see. 
the clock speeds here. We're getting 4.15, 4.14. And 100% CPU usage. Our CPU temperatures are peaking hard right now at 98 degrees, um, which is obviously not ideal, but in my opinion, it is probably still safe for the laptop. It's just, it's not ideal for sure if you're gonna be running at all the CPU heavy stuff all the time. Um, yeah, like video rendering all the time or something. But it's unlikely to damage it because the laptops are designed to function within this temperature range. That's the truth, but it does suck running at this high of temperature. It's concerning, you know, it's concerning. So, um, not that it's going to be destroyed or something instantly or have a short lifespan, I don't think. But, yeah, typically speaking, your ideal temperature range when under a heavy CPU load would be like, you know, under 90 would be the ideal. All right, so that time we only got 3130. We must be throttling a bit, probably thermal throttling. So, and because we're thermal throttling, our clock speed and everything is going to be dropping down a bit. Yeah, you can see our effective clock speed is, interestingly enough, it's not matching up to the direct clock. I'm not sure which one you're supposed to be looking at here. But yeah, we can see we're not hitting the full 4.2 gigahertz anymore. Because we were at 4.25 when we first started up. So we're getting some throttling on the CPU. You're still gonna be able to do lots of things on this machine. It's, it's clearly allowed to pull a good amount of power. We're pulling 60 watts of power to the CPU, which is pretty impressive. Um, for Again, for a budget gaming laptop, it's not bad. Over, overall, this is impressive, I think, for the money still, but it's, I wish the cooling was a little bit better. That's what I would say. Like a laptop cooler, Increase the airflow. All of that would definitely help with this laptop. What happened to the Acer Helios 300? Um, I am getting a replacement. I'm going to take it to Best Buy and get a replacement. I called their support to see if I could mail it in. And it was going to take too long mailing it in. So I have to go into the store and go into a Best Buy store that has, that has one in stock and just get it swapped out, basically. Okay, we got 3445 that time. So it, I guess it's trying to get its legs under it here and overall that's not a bad score um that's not a bad score for a budget gaming laptop it's actually a really good score i think um we'll let it run one more time then we'll do santa bench r23 and let me know if you guys have any other questions on this laptop before we end the live stream um, but once we, once we get done with the Cinebench R23, that'll be it for the live stream. So, um, yeah, hit me with your questions. If not, I'll have to check the comments on the live stream video after the fact. Oh, you guys aren't seeing the, the... You guys should have told me. Well, there we go. I'm going to blame you guys on this one. <laughs> it's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I've been running Cinebench R23, and I've had this up so you guys could see it this whole time, and, you, and I had the live stream on the wrong window. Well, we got 3703 that time. That's our best score yet. I'm curious how high of a performance we'd actually get in the end. Probably less things interrupting it. But you can see our temperature is very high at 98 degrees, 97 degrees, which is not, not ideal. And you can see our clock speeds right here while we're running it. And this is the, uh, I think, sixth run now on Cinebench R20. So overall, good amount of power.
power to the CPU and a good amount of overall performance, but it's not ideal. That's what I would say. If this is a this is a good, a good result. They're not. Um, they didn't handicap the CPU too much, but they didn't quite provide enough cooling for it either. So maybe repasting this might help a lot. A laptop cooler would probably help a lot. Um, reduce the temperatures because right now we're thermal throttling, and that's why we're not hitting our 4.25 gigahertz across all cores. So. Anyway, overall, I'm impressed. Again, for the money, I think it's a good result. All right, so 3610. Our best Cinebench score was about 3700. And now we're going to do our Cinebench R23. Okay. Can you do a test in games in a separate video? Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a live streaming benchmarking test on this laptop as well. So if you want to see the whole benchmarking shebang for this laptop, uh, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you, you, can, um, you can check it out. So we're going to do a multi-core. We're not going to do a single, single core render. Um, yeah, so if, if you hit that subscribe bell, you'll be notified when I go live for the multi-game. Uh, we're going to probably test about 8 to 10 games. I'll have to see about which games I want to switch in and out for the new season. Basically, we have some new games that were released, and I'm tempted to do some benchmarking of some new games. If you guys have suggestions for which games I should benchmark or be sure to benchmark, hit me up in chat. Let me know what you think. Um, Gusher says, should I get this or the Gigabyte G5? Uh, Gusher, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this one. And I think the chassis on the Lenovo IdeaPad's a little bit better. But the display is probably a little bit better on the Gigabyte G5. So if you want, if you want a better display... Go for the Gigabyte G5. If you want a better overall chassis, go for this Lenovo IdeaPad. Um, overall, I would probably pick the this Lenovo IdeaPad over the Gigabyte G5. But uh, I think they're both good budget gaming laptops. So at 550, they're both really good options for a 3050 Ti chassis version. Okay, so... This thing is running. We just want to do we just want to do a single test run, not a, not a multi test run. All right. Okay. Rodrigo says, I bought this laptop a few days ago, and I'm getting pretty low FPS and FPS drops in low graphics games, Minecraft, LOL. And I have no clue what's happening. I'm in performance mode while charging. So, um, Rodrigo, you might be running into power limiting issues with the power adapter not providing enough juice, maybe, to charge the laptop battery at the same time, because it was a pretty minimal power adapter. Um, to help reduce stuttering, you could do a few different things. You could try running it in balanced mode or in like the battery saver mode for those lightweight games, so that way the GPU and CPU don't pull as much juice. And maybe it will be less stuttery, which would be weird, but. Um, because when you go into those low power modes, it pulls less wattage, then it won't cause a hard break stutter if it, if it, if it gets throttled hard or something. So something to try. Uh, you also might want to try, uh, just making sure the battery is charged all the way up before you start playing games and see if that helps. Maybe it won't help. Maybe it will. I don't know. 
Okay, so our Cinebench R23 score was 9448. 9448. I can't believe you're getting this much performance in only a $550 package. It's kind of insane. It's pretty insane. So let me check out the comments here. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and check, answer some questions or check comments. And then we'll go ahead and take an end here. So uh, Chad Burdett says, I snagged the Gigabyte Aorus 15 with a 165 inch QHD IPS level display with an i7-12700 RTX 3070 Ti, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, one terabyte SSD for $12.99. Dude, congrats, that's an awesome deal. That's seriously a really good deal. I hope you enjoyed that laptop, man. Um, Minecraft tends to default to the uh, integrated GPU. You can verify this by hitting F3 when in game to see which GPU it's using. That's true. If you're getting low performance in a lightweight game, you might be on the integrated GPU. Um, so if you go into Windows here, I'm just going to go ahead and show you, I think, under graphics settings, is this it? Yeah, so change default graphics settings. Um, let me go back. So, I don't have any apps installed here, but if you wanted to, you can basically, like, if you, once you install a game, it'll show up here in this list. And then you can select that game and click options, and you can select, oh, I want to run this application with the high performance laptop GPU instead of the low performance one. And then when you launch that application, it should use the correct GPU. You could also verify what's going on in whatever game you're playing um, to see if, especially you want to see if it's the CPU causing the stuttering or the GPU causing the stuttering to see which one's being throttled. So to do that, you can use MSI Afterburner and do an in-game overlay. And then you can see, oh, this, the GPU clock dropped and I got a stutter or, oh, the CPU clock dropped and I got a stutter. So that can help you isolate what's going on. Um, another thing you should probably do if you're trying to troubleshoot your Lenovo IdeaPad if there's stuttering going on, you want to make sure all your drivers are up to date, your BIOS is up to date, all of that. And the main ways to do that would be going through Windows Update and then also your Lenovo software here. You want to go into here and you want to do System Update right here. And you want to check for updates, and it's going to go through and check to see if you have any BIOS updates, especially, um, or any critical updates that you may need that is causing these problems. So if you're still getting these problems after updating all of these things, then then yeah. So And if you want to go to Windows Update, you just go to uh, type go into your Windows thing and search Update, Windows Update here, and then you want to hit Download and Install All, which I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Because I, I needed to do that anyway. Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful and hope that solves your problem um, with your stuttering. Okay. I typically change the graphics settings to the NVIDIA control panel. Uh, you may also be able to do that there. I'm not sure which way is best. Windows 11 added that option to switch which application is used to launch um, in in there uh, inside of the Windows graphics switching settings. Uh, so far, that that's worked for me every time I've needed to change things. But you may still, if it doesn't work for you, maybe you need to do it in the NVIDIA control panel. Depends. Um, Eric asks, best OLED laptop. Um, probably, probably something like one of the Alienware laptops with an OLED display would probably be the route I would go if I wanted to go OLED. Um, another option would be like the Gigabyte Aero. Um, but the recent reviews on that laptop has been pretty meh. So 
I'd probably go Giga or I'd probably go Alienware for OLED if it was me. So All right. You guys are chatting about some other stuff. Um that's it for the live stream for today. Again, tune in to the live benchmarking stream. We're going to go over and test a whole bunch of games in this laptop. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be able to get some even better impressions of its performance. Overall, I'm impressed with the, the overall fit and finish and feel of this machine, especially for the budget. The display seems fairly nice, seems responsive. I haven't done any gaming on it yet to see if there's ghosting, but... It doesn't seem like it. it. seems like the display is pretty responsive, just how I move the mouse. It's hard to tell just moving the mouse, though. Moving this. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty responsive of a display. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, for 550 I think this is the laptop to beat, probably. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. I will see you guys in the next live stream. Peace out.